Ohio State has a new running backs coach. Three weeks after Tony Alford leaves the Buckeyes to go to Michigan, a Big Ten on Big Ten crime, I guess, if you will. Ohio State pulls off the same trick, hires Carlos Lachlan from Oregon, new Big Ten foe. And now the Buckeyes coaching staff is complete yet again. That's Andy Baxter in the middle of the screen. Tim May on the other side of that screen. I'm Spencer Holbrook. We're here to break it down. Tim, what do you think? Carlos Lachlan, Scarlet and Gray instead of, uh, I don't know, what is it, green and yellow? Green, yeah, depending on what uniform they lay out for him every day, you know, yeah. could run the range. We'll see that up close and personal October the what thirteenth or twelfth, whatever it is. But uh, but I digress. Uh, I think it's I think it's a damn good hire based on the you know the the primary uh, consideration that Ryan Day has for assistant coaches is can you recruit? This guy can recruit. I mean, he's he's uh, gotten accolades all over and from that realm. Uh, and then number two, he seems to be a very talented coach on top of that. And number three, uh, you know, for one of another term, uh, he's affordable, you know. And uh, the great thing is, uh, as Ryan Day pointed out, you know, waiting until after April 1 or waiting until April 1, uh, which happens to be also be uh, Andy Backstrom's birthday, uh, no, no fooling, uh, uh, they were able to get him at a bargain uh, bargain price from a standpoint of a of a buyout. His buyout dropped in half, I think, to like three hundred and seventy thousand dollars, as opposed to the buyout. Of his, he had just signed a new two year contract with with Oregon, but for only like I think four hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, I'm not sure what his contract's going to be with Ohio State yet, but I think Tony offered his last year made seven seventy two seven hundred seventy two thousand. They had offered, I think, offered a basically a tacit uh, two-year contract worth $800,000 a year. We'll see uh, where Carlos falls in there. But everything I get, and I, I think you guys agree with me, uh, you know, and you're going on a lot of word of mouth here, is this guy's a hell of a coach and a hell of a recruiter. And uh, it sounds like the um, the way I understand it, the current Ohio State running backs, uh, Ryan Day ran this guy past them, and they signed off on him also. So I, that's a win-win-win the way it looks like. Andy? Yeah, I've seen some clips of him coaching when he was at Oregon. Clearly seems a passionate guy, and, and it's easy to understand why these running backs would have liked him when they went through this vetting process. He's 46 years old. He was only with Oregon for a few years. He was part of that inaugural staff for Dan Lanning. And before that, he had off-the-field roles at Florida State and Memphis. So this isn't like his 10th job as a running back coach at a power conference team. He's still like relatively new to this, and I think that there's some appeal there just of – you know, you don't really know what his ceiling can be. And clearly he proved himself at Oregon uh, with that running game there and helping a couple of thousand yard rushers and some guys come into the program that he was able to develop. I think the most notable one is probably the Minnesota transfer. Bucky Irving came in and he had two 1000 yard rushing seasons back to back. So, you know, when you have guys that can help bring in other guys, I think for Ohio State, the portal is always going to be key. For running back position, we think about Quinshaw Judkins this offseason, but even previous, we think about, you know, someone like Trey Sermon who came in. I think that the portal is always key for the running back position. And the fact that he's already done that at a school like Oregon, I think is key. And then, as you mentioned, Tim, just recruiting in-house, I think, is also a big thing for the position. Yeah, the the uh, the way that he progressed in his career was a weight room assistant at Memphis after a long time. Uh, Tennessee high school football coach. He becomes an offensive analyst there at Memphis, director of high school relations at Memphis under Mike Norvell, the director of high school relations at Florida State, got a really big job there at Florida State, becomes the running backs coach at Western Kentucky, finds a little bit of a home there in niche co uh, coaching running backs. You know, you find your position, you stick to it. Then he gets a promotion all the way out to Eugene and Dan Lanning picks him up. Listen, Dan Lanning knows what good recruiters look like. He's worked under Kirby Smart. He's worked under Nick Saban. He is kind of a an outlaw on the recruiting trail. A lot of people know him as a, a dogged recruiter, one of the, the really good, good recruiters nationally. If he gives you that seal of approval, you got to be really good at what you do. And I think that should give Ohio State fans a lot of confidence that the recruiting is not going to take any sort of dip. You know, For what Tony Alford didn't do on the recruiting trail, he did land nine two, top 200 running backs. Well, in just two years – you know, a couple of years as the Oregon running backs coach, um, Carlos Lachlan landed too. And so that's a good sign for Ohio State. Like, that's what you need. Since this announcement has started to percolate, 
Um, you know, the, the, the RPM predictions for Ohio State have been coming in for Jordan Davison because he's got a relationship with two places, Ohio State and then Oregon's running backs coach. Well, you put those two together, it looks like he might have, you know, found something already on the trail. So I think this is a really good hire on the recruiting department. Matt Parker and I will talk about that over in the Letterman Lounge later this week. Uh, but on the field, you know, it's not easy to coach running backs. It's not easy to be a high-level coach anywhere, Tim. But um, he's got a pretty good starting point with this running back room, I would say. And, and I think the yeah. key is going to be to convince all these guys to stick around and see it through and make sure that the five in the room are happy heading into the season. Just two things I want to pick up on it. You said a minute ago, percolate. That reminds me of my mom's old uh, coffee maker. Da, 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 da. See, you guys are too young to remember that, but they used to percolate, go up and come out this little thing and go down. Now we all have these drip per, uh, drip coffee makers or in, in my case, K-cups. Uh, and number two, what a, what a good recruiter looks like. You know, let's throw a picture up there of Tim Walton. You know, that's what a good recruiter looks like. And uh, of Brian Hartline, you know, Ryan Day wants that. He wants to be in on every big time running back there is, no matter where they're located in the country. Uh, we'll see if Carlos can keep up his early magic streak going in that regard. Uh, but yeah, he, you know, he's, a, it's kind of like uh, you're, you're moving up the ranks of a conductor, you know, and now all of a sudden you're you're uh, talking about the running backs room, and now all of a sudden uh, you're now conducting the New York Philharmonic, you know. Uh, that's what uh, Carlos uh, is is walking into here with with Travion Henderson, Quinshawn Judkins, Dallin Hayden. We watched him run on Saturday during uh, MAD Media Appreciation Day, and uh, you saw you see what he definitely has a fire in his belly, and interestingly, he's from the from Tennessee, and uh, and so is Carlos, but that's another star. I think Carlos graduated from the University of Chattanooga or Chattanooga <laughs> slash Tennessee or Tennessee slash Chattanooga. Uh, I think they wrote a song about that a long time ago. But, uh, yeah, he he's falling, you know, he's falling right into a nice uh, bubble bath here in terms of his first uh, group of running backs at Ohio State and can he add to it. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, – I know Ryan Day feels really good because now he has his staff back intact. Of course, he thought that when he hired Bill O'Brien, and three weeks later, Bill O'Brien was gone. So, we'll, you know, you never know anymore these days about players and coaches uh, hit, going hither and yon. And the funny thing about it is there's not going to be a whole lot of uh, 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 hullabaloo about, the, uh, about this hire, even though Ohio State's first really huge test of the season. I think Iowa was going to be a hell of a test, but the next week – Ohio State goes to Oregon, and uh, now, just like uh, Michigan picking up Tony Alford, Ohio State's picked up uh, the running back from what promises to be maybe the second-best team, if not the best team in the Big Ten uh, this season. Ohio State and Oregon are, are, are pitted to go at each other in some form or fashion, perhaps twice this year. And uh, so a little bit of insight never hurts. Andy, uh Carlos Lachlan will join the program soon. Um, it's now official, so he can join whenever he can get here. Um, I imagine they won't have any issues getting him here. I think uh, he's going to take the Oregon Trail, but I may be wrong. Go ahead. There, there it is. Uh, but now he's got two weeks to work with these running backs before the spring game, and more importantly, to in all honesty, before the transfer portal opens, um, because Ohio State lost a position coach, and there's two running backs at the very top that are really good. So. Uh, I think it's important that Ohio State gets two weeks with Carlos Lachlan to to learn who he is, to to be around the players, to uh, be around the coaching staff, and to fig figure out you know how to move forward. Because um, it's not easy to replace a coach in the middle of spring. Now you got two weeks to kind of sort things out, and it's not just a after the spring hire. What do you think, Andy? Yeah, I mean, again, I, the fact that these running backs were involved in this process, I think, helps because you know that they at least like the guy. I also think that the way that they've been running the running back room this spring gives you some optimism for these guys sticking around, given that, you know, the practices we've seen, all of them are getting pretty substantial work. Even TC Caffey, who is a preferred walk on rounds out that group. It's like six deep right now. And they seem to really like what all of them are doing. When we were at student appreciation day, you know, Travion Henderson didn't do a ton of work, but we saw Quinshot Judkins. Uh, we saw down Hayden. We saw Sam Williams Dixon. We saw James Peoples. And then again, TC Caffey. And, you know, the fact that all of them were getting work, and it didn't feel like it was one more than the other. And that's just because they're trying to get them all reps. I think that that's encouraging if you're a fan trying to say, like, well, are they getting enough to want to stay here? 
I feel like there's enough being done and you need all of them. I mean, look at the last couple of years, this running back room, we talked about, oh, it's the deepest in the country. It could be the best in the country. And maybe it could have been, but because of injuries, there's just been limitations on this group. And I think that's just the reality of the position. And when you're playing a season, that could be 16, 17 games. They talk about it with the defensive line. They talk about it with the offensive line. But that depth of running back is maybe most important because you're going to need that. You know, we've seen the last couple of years, even in 12, 13 games. So I think there's a major case to be made for all of these guys for why they should be staying. And I don't know if it's going to be terribly hard for Willis Lachlan to convince them. No. By the way, I thought I had all my volumes turned off on my phone. I mean, been, it's been a strange day uh, here in the May in the May uh, in the, at the May Ranch held, and I, I apologize for that going off. And real quick, I wanted to say I, I enjoyed watching that scrimmage on Saturday, from especially when we got to get behind the team and watch. You know, which is my favorite part of of Mad Media Appreciation Day because it looked like the running backs for the most part were on point uh, in the pass pro or the check and release. Uh, program you know i'm sure that'll get better as it goes on but it looked like uh the honorary running backs coach ryan day had done a pretty good job that week yeah i think so i think that ryan day did a, an admirable job filling in you know as far as, <laughs> as far as we've seen and as far as we've heard uh you know it was kind of a pretty smooth transition all things considered obviously yeah. um you know not ideal in any sense of the word um you know i think that this this move to hire carlos lachlan um it can go one of two ways, really. Like, I don't Good know. Bad, he, you mean? <laughs> well, I don't know if he has to come in and completely revamp the running game because Chip Kelly's already doing that. Justin Fry's got a large hand in that, and Ryan Day is already pushing himself to become more of a run-oriented offensive guy as he's brought in Chip Kelly and over the last couple of years added Justin Fry, and and I think the receivers are all on board with that as well. And the quarterback run, we saw that on Saturday. And so, like, Carlos Lachlan doesn't have to come in. And reinvent the wheel here. He doesn't have to come in and completely, you know, reinvigor a running game that hasn't been up to par, you know, the last couple of of years. So, like, you know, it, it doesn't have to be this. It didn't have to be this revolutionary or or revel, or, you know, this revelation of a hire. It just needed to be somebody who could get the job done. Now you have a young, energetic coach in that running back room who, you know, by all accounts on the recruiting trail, can relate to to running backs who can get them on campus, who can do the things that you need to do at Ohio State, and then, you know, work with them individually and let Chip Kelly's running game and Justin Fry's blocking scheme kind of take over and do that. I think this is this is what, you know, not uh, – this is maybe what the doctor ordered for Ohio State because as good as Tony Alford was, you know, I, I think Carlos Lachlan can fill in pretty nicely, Andy. I tell you what. I tell you what. Uh, I think Ryan likes about Carlos Lachlan is the enthusiasm aspect of things. Because Tony, you know, Tony, I I like Tony Offord. I'm not going to ever rip Tony Offord, but he was pretty laid back to a certain extent, you know. And uh, and you can definitely just watch some little bit of video out there of Carlos Lachlan about he, you know, about how he gets after it, especially on the on the uh, uh, on the practice field. It reminds me of Stan Drayton. Way back, uh, way back, you know, when uh, Urban Meyer got hired, what Stan, Stan Drayton did there, what the first three years at Ohio State, um, uh, before moving on, uh, moving to the NFL, and uh, uh, you know, do you know the game? That's the main thing. There are fine points here. They're going to that that they want to get ironed out with these running backs to also re enhance the running game. There are going to be tighter fits in a lot of the things they're doing. Some of the I'm not going to say the reads are going to be different, but they're adding some options for one of another term. And that's a good way of putting it to the running game under Chip Kelly. And, you know, and in, in that regard, it's not so much you got to know where you're going from the get go, but you got to know where to look to 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 get to where you want to go. And uh, those will be the little fine points that they get into, especially the last two weeks of spring. I'm not sure, you know, Carlos may be here today as far as I, as far as I know. I haven't checked, but I know he'll be here definitely by the end of this week. And it'll be interesting to see how fast they get him up to speed on a lot of things they're trying to do. But, you know, Oregon already runs a pretty nice offense, you know, so uh, uh, he'll have a few things to add to it, I'm sure. Yeah, well, Tim, you, you mentioned the Oregon connection with them playing Oregon this season, but also, you know, Chip Kelly used to coach the school in Eugene there. So uh, that's just another tie. But I, obviously he wasn't there when Carlos was there. But I think the thing with this hire is that, you know, you guys talk about the recruiting aspect of it. I think that'll just work out for him. You know, obviously he has to put in the work on the trail, but the way this offense is constructed now, 
with Chip Kelly, with Justin Fry, and that kind of marriage that we saw at UCLA, the way that Chip Kelly has taken the run game over the course of his career, evolved it, the way he likes to use multiple running backs, I think that's super palatable to any recruit. You know, they're going to look at this, and especially if it goes the way we think it might this season, let's say both Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins rush for near a 1,000 yards, and they're also involved in the passing game. I mean, that's a silver platter right there for the recruiting trail, just being like, hey, look what we can do here. This is just what happened with two guys that are off to the NFL. That alone will help in recruiting. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy for them. I'm just saying that the way that things are constructed now, that's why this hire, I think they were able to be patient with, not because whoever was going to be hired was just going to be doing a great job. I do think they needed to be you know, a little bit diplomatic with who they were picking, but I do think that it's going to be you know, set up for great success for Carlos Lachlan. And, and that's yeah. especially if these guys can just perform the way we think they can. It's, it's kind of funny what you, you know, in your mind, what you're kind of excited about seeing this year, uh, more running. <laughs> you know what I mean? Most of the time when, when you think, ah, big time, high powered, uh, modern offenses, you think, uh, passing, but I mean, you know, fellas, don't be surprised if we look up, uh, uh during one game or maybe all year and see this, uh, occasionally the, in essence, the 23 look, I mean, the 23 personnel, which, you know, is, as Woody Hayes called it, robust, you know, robust T. Because, um, you know, Chip Kelly's got all of these things uh, in his resume, in his in his repertoire. Let's put it that way. And uh, uh, this is going to be a very interesting year because I think people might get as excited about the running game as they do the passing game, which is really odd considering the last decade or so of Ohio State. Well, the last many years of Ohio State football, let's put it that way. When Zeke Elliott was around and stuff, the running game was pretty damn good too. Yeah, they had a two thousand yard. And J.K. Back. Dobbins, yeah, yeah, two thousand yard back in nineteen. Trey Sermon broke the single game record in twenty twenty. Uh, yeah. The running game in twenty twenty one was bad, but at the beginning of the season, it was good when Travion Henderson took over and Mayan Williams. So they've had success. Um, they know what it looks like. Ryan Day knows what it looks like under you know, under Urban Meyer in 2017 and 18 or 2017, they were decent at running 2018. They weren't. So it can happen. And I think it will happen this year that Ohio state trying to make it happen with a new running backs coach, Carlos Lachlan is officially locked in with Ohio state. Uh, I wish I'd thought of that one. Two year deal. Ohio state gets an, another assistant coach on a two year deal. That's pretty standard operating procedure for the book guys, but now it's official. And Carlos Lachlan. Carlos Lachlan will be the running backs coach of Ohio State, replacing Tony Alford. Andy Backstrom is going to have full coverage at lettermanroad.com. So will the 41-year vet Tim May and me, Spencer Holbrook. Matt Parker and Alex Gleitman will cover it on the recruiting side. As Carlos Lachlan joins the program, we'll see you guys over at lettermanroad.com. You can get all of our coverage for $1 for your first month. We'll talk about pricing after that. $1 for your first month, lettermanroad.com. We'll see you guys over there.